Our next contest of the Water Photography Weekly Challenge is In Search of the Self. Our judge and mentor is Shaheen Peer. She's a photographer and fashion stylist based in Pondicherry. Her work is distinguished by her use of color and a graphic sensibility. She is dedicated to exploring a cultural landscape through fashion and photography while primarily focusing on brown bodies. Shahin applies a singular aesthetic across fashion, portraiture, fine art, and editorial assignments. In addition to contributing her energy to a variety of assignments, her work also goes on display in varied galleries. For instance, right now, her work is in a group show at 1014 Gallery in London and previously was on view at The Method in Kalagora, Mumbai. Hello and welcome. Thanks for having me, Niloka. So I'm starting with two examples of self-portraits that I made during the first lockdown. We often expect to see a face in the image when we talk about self-portraiture. So in this presentation, what I'm doing is using examples, I'm going to explore different approaches to self-portraiture and challenge the notion of what it can be. During the making of the series, I was contemplating about the industry that I work in, how in fashion we've been seeing this overuse of celebrities, the over-sexualization of women, and we're more concerned by who is in the photograph than what the photograph is about. We've just become obsessed with the face as a culture, and I see my self-portraits as a reaction to these things. I was primarily interested in photographing myself without the face, so by removing the face, people started noticing all the other elements in the photograph, like color, texture, form. There's also personal and cultural context in that I use my mother's sari to drape the body. My first sari, which I wore when I was 14 years old, is the orange one on the left. The primary method in which I articulate my sensibilities is definitely through color. It engages both the child and the adult in me. From time to time, I would also feel compelled to draw from memories of my childhood. I just wanted to translate this Sunday hair care, hair care ritual from my school days into a photograph. And that's how this image, the oil bath, came about. So you can approach a self-portrait by conveying ideas of the self, conveying ideas outside the self, or there can also be an interaction of both sorry, an intersection of both. And I'm gonna explain this better using some visual references. So yeah, speaking of ideas of the self, this is Amrita Shagir's self-portrait with either. It's a radically simple canvas. It depicts the artist at work to sexualize and domestic and scene back then. So she here, she's deliberately moving away from those common domestic depictions and declaring herself a woman at work. So here she's both subject and object, creator and created. And uh, for me personally, this painting is a declaration. She's saying, this is me, I'm the artist, I'm a woman at work. Here we have uh, Paula Madison Becker. This She's actually credited with painting the first pregnant nude self-portrait in Western history. It's a brave and revolutionary act because for a woman to do so was just unthinkable at that time. She painted the self-portrait at the age of 30 and went on to do six more nudes. Again, here, rather than the idealized and even sexualized ways in which the female nude was typically depicted by male artists, she approached her subject with a more sensitive female gaze. So by creating this work, she inspired a whole generation of new self-portraits exploring the feminine physicality as well as the emotional experiences of um, being a woman from a female point of view, which was just so much rarer in comparison. Uh, this is such an incredible self-portrait made by Alice Neal. After five decades of dedicated portraiture, this was her first self, her first self-portrait. At 80 years old, 
she lived long enough to capture her take on aging. So in the previous slide, I talked about how Paula Madison Becker was, she pioneered the pregnant nude self-portrait, but it was still adhering to more conventional standards of beauty as a youthful young woman. Contrastingly here, Alice Neal turns her gaze, her very honest gaze on herself in a, in a documentation of her aging body. Can you imagine an 80 year old woman in the 80s daring to paint a nude? This is the work of Carrie Mae Weems. She used self-portraiture to articulate broader social truths and examine class and gender issues through the lens of an African-American woman. This image I've added is a part of a series called Not Money's Type, and it's a commentary on the absence or objectification of black women's bodies in the history of modern art. Uh, this portrait employs both photographs and texts, which is something to consider if you are inclined to do so. In 1990, Carrie Mae Weems produced the Kitchen Table series in an attempt to capture the experiences of Black womanhood. She developed a character of a woman around the intimate setting of a kitchen table. She also included others in addition to her own self to construct these everyday scenes. I highly recommend everyone to look into her work. I thought this would be a fun example to include. So Savai Ram Singh II was one of the kings of Jaipur and he ruled in the 1800s. He was apparently the first Indian photographer king. He had a keen interest in photography and he made a number of self-portraits. So I first encountered his work in Jaipur in the form of these post postcards that I'm holding here. Um, I've kept these for many years. So most of his self-portraits depict his daily life in the palace and shine a light on the different aspects of his personality. He was a dedicated follower of Lord Shiva, which explains the image on the right. So in contrast to these depictions, daily depictions of the self, here we have Samuel Fossil's work uh, in uh, contrast. This is, a, this is an example of using self-portraiture to talk about issues outside the self. Fossil self-portraits as the chief, he who sold Africa to the colonists is one of his most iconic photographs that I've included in this presentation. So in this, Samuel goes beyond representing just himself. He uses the opportunity of the self-portrait to share his criticism of corrupt African leaders and colonial powers that existed at the time. Now I'm introducing you to exquisite self-portraits come try and see in outlines. This series is called Silhouettes by Anna Mandiata, a personal favorite of mine. Anna Mandiata made silhouettes for, silhouettes for seven years. She used elements such as fire, earth, water, and attempted to create a dialogue between the landscape and the body. This was a period when she was reflecting on her own place in the world as a Cuban refugee in America. So what she'd do is create outlines of the female form, frequently her own, and often left the imprint of her body on the earth's surfaces. These were all staged in the wild outdoors, so they had a temporary quality to them, but she carefully preserved these moments through photographs and film. The more I discovered about Mendiata, the more amazed I was at how much work she had done and what kind of work she had created. She just got this extensive body of work that I definitely encourage everyone to look into. So self-portraits with her body distorted as it's pressed against a sheet of glass, self portraits with facial hair and so much more that she's produced in her brief lifetime. Lastly, we have Claude Cahoon. They were a queer French photographer and writer. Their work conveyed ideas of the self and outside the self. It was both political and personal and often played with concepts of gender and sexuality. I consider this collage a self portrait. It 
includes portraits of the artist as well as portraits of their romantic partner Marcel. So many of the different pieces within the collage, they exist as a symbolic representation of their ideas and not a direct depiction of the artists themselves. So what I try to do with all of these images that I've shared right now essentially is to convey that a self-portrait can take different forms. It can be a collage, a character, a performance, so on. It doesn't have to be the generic, you know, uh, artist sitting in front of the camera, face forward. It's, it's not just that singular or one-dimensional depiction of a self-portrait. So, um, yeah, it can convey ideas both of the self, outside the self, and in an in in intersection of both. And hopefully it comes from a place of curiosity. I'm just leaving you with uh, some images that I created and a uh, link to my website. Yeah, good luck to everyone with their submissions. I hope this presentation proved useful and expanded your view of what a self-portrait can be.